so much for making some time to have a chat with myself. I really do appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. No, no worries at all, Joe. Cool. First off, for the uninitiated, the people that haven't heard of you guys, who are King? Uh, who are King? Um, King is myself on guitar. Then you've got um, Tony Ford on vocals and uh, Dave Haley on drums. So that makes up the kind of core of King. And then we have, um, like for live, to kind of replicate the album live, we have another guitarist, uh, Cam Roberts, and a bass player, Tim Anderson, which, um, yeah, works great for uh, the live setting. Yeah, you had some pretty cool live shows this year. Who were you supporting over here in Australia? I know you had some awesome shows as well. Yeah, we played a few um, shows uh, recently with uh, Wolves in the Throne Room from the States. Yeah. Yep. And they, they were great. It was only uh, four shows, but it, it was really cool. It was really good. Um, I think you know, their crowd, there was good potential they'd like our music. I mean, we, we sound different, but, you know, I think we'd appeal. And it, it went seemed to go down really well. And, um, yeah, they were great shows. Sydney and Melbourne were awesome. Uh, Brisbane was pretty cool. And Canberra, Canberra's always fun as well. So it was good to yeah. get get out um, to some decent crowds and like try out some of some of the new songs. And the the five piece um, live lineup, we've only started doing that this year. So that's been great too. It's heaps heaps better, heaps better live with with a yeah. Well, I'm hoping to catch you guys sometime in 2020 live. I, I live um, in South Australia, so I'm hoping to get over the east coast sometime or maybe you guys come over this way and we catch you guys yeah. in 2020 um yeah, i always cool. like to ask about instruments yeah. when and how yeah. did you first get into playing guitar mate um i probably started just at the very end of primary school maybe like grade six or year seven um just learning acoustic guitar because um i, I liked music probably not not metal then but um yeah, I just it was offered at the school and I got into it there and really enjoyed it and then started to kind of get into metal stuff and obviously that's very guitar driven. So that, you know, kind of spurred me along to get lessons for, you know, maybe like the next uh, seven or eight years. And yeah, I don't know, just started playing in bands from there and, you know, once that happens, it's kind of a slippery slope and, <laughs> um, you know, it becomes, yeah became a real like love of mine to do that well it's a passion is for artists people you know is the musicians are artists in my book you know you've got to get out there and create what's in your spirit you know and you soul the music yeah uh, yeah i agree totally yeah um what was your first guitar you got mate oh i think the first one was given to me by a friend of my parents it was probably i think it was like a les paul copy I think the brand was like a stag or something like that kind of like the yeah. sun, sunburst finish you know weighed a ton um that was pretty early on um yeah besides an acoustic before that i'm not sure what brand or anything but um yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was my first electric awesome what guitars are you using now and what we're using on the album um now I'm using a brand called Comparison from Japan. They're, um, yeah, it's, uh, that's the one I used on the album, and that's the one I use live. Um, yeah, they're a Japanese brand. They've been around for a while. Um, uh, yeah, just, I saw, I think I saw Soil Work using them in the early 2000s, and I was like, you know, they've got a kind of interesting... Uh, I think they call it a devil's tail headstock. And I'm like, oh, you know, what's that thing? And kind of did a bit of research, looked good. Ended up going to Japan to pick one up. And, yeah, I still love it. It's fantastic. Feels great to play. Sounds cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my main guitar. Yeah, it's great sound too. Um, King's 2016 release, Reclaim the Darkness, is one of the best debut releases I've hand, heard from a band in a long time. Oh, thanks. Uh, it was really well received, and it was like a couple of years in the making, I know, for you guys. What was that process like, creating that and bringing that out to the public? Um, look, it was different to musically to anything um, I'd done in the past. 
and I think I could speak for Tony, the vocalist, as well. I, we both come from more like the previous bands to King have been um, basically grindcore stuff, death metal. Tony was the singer for Blood Duster. I played in um, other grindcore bands, like one called Fuck I'm Dead and um, another one called The Day Everything Became Nothing. So those, you know, don't sound anything like King. So I've always been yeah. a fan of um, more uh, like black metal stuff and melodic stuff as well. So to make that album was, um, it, it kind of came easily because I was, you know, I really have always lo loved that kind of music. But um, I think the real challenge I found right in the music was this kind of the, the song arrangements and the, um, yeah, like the riff side of thing wasn't so hard. It was just kind of I hadn't had to focus on the arrangement so so much before. We're like with yeah. previous grind stuff, you know, it's often was super fast, you know, kind of compressed <laughs> into short short amount of times, and it was more about. Oh, I felt it was more about you know just kind of being like um, all together, but like kind of just chaotic and intense and more about the, you know, that kind of intense feeling. Whereas yeah. the King, uh, yeah, there was a lot, a lot more space in the riffs, you know, kind of like easier riffs, but um, a lot more melody. So I had to kind of work out um, like different layers and what fit together and um, leaving room for vocals, you know, a lot, a lot of time with like grind stuff, you know, the riffs are really busy. So kind of leaving room for vocals, imagining what a chorus might be or where it could be, how to kind of build up to that or hint at a riff and then bring it back later on. Like that stuff I hadn't really tried in that detail before. Yeah. So it was, you know, the, the demos and stuff sounded like, you know, okay. And as we kind of started to put, you know, some demo vocals over them, we thought, you know, this might be pretty cool. And then yeah. when um, Dave Haley recorded the proper drums, you know, it started to, you know, bring it really all together and sound like something cool. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, yeah. yeah, it was quite a, you know, a challenge, but, you know, really rewarding at many different stages putting Reclaim the Darkness together. Yeah, it's, you just always bring out great music. If you had to pick a favourite track from that album, which one would you pick and why? From that album? Um, yeah. Well, probably... Um, uh, there's a kind of mid, a slow one on there called My Destination the Stars. Um, yep. Yeah, I really, I really love that one. I love the hot, it's a bit of a longer song, like maybe around six minutes or more, but it's, um, it's got lyric. I think I wrote the lyrics for that one. It's kind of got a personal, you know, I'm attached to it a bit personally. Um, uh, and um, yeah, you know, every time I listen to it, Kind of, you know, brings me back to the, you know, the time when I was writing the lyrics to it and what they're about. Um, yeah, so I think that one I'm probably the most attached to, and yeah, I really, yeah, the chorus is great. Uh, it's kind of got a cool, um, epic middle section. That's cool. We played it live for a while when we were doing shows for Reclaim the Darkness, and it was it was great too. It's probably probably my favorite, yep. I think, from that one. Yeah, that's got to be different too. Doing like these, um, these long songs, like those six-minute songs. Back to when you were doing grindcore, you probably get about seven songs in the space of like a six-minute song, oh, or something like that. Oh, eh? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You could easily do, you know, like back with "Fuck I'm Dead." You know, we'd do easily like twenty songs in a set in like a half-hour set. So yeah. it was a a big, big difference. Yeah, and I, I'm finding yeah. with um, black metal, like as I'm getting older, it's like a fine wine. I, I appreciate black metal mm. and black and death metal a lot more as I've got older. Back when I was yeah. younger, I was more into that new metal. And yeah, you go. No, you, no, you can. <laughs> yeah, is, is it the same for you? Like as you've like you know you've got found more love with the black metal and been able to appreciate it more as you've got older, or um, I've probably got you know I've probably gotten into a later on but you know probably got into like uh, you know like hard rock you know like guns and roses motley crew that kind yeah. of thing and it was a gradual progression from that you know searching for heavier stuff into you know like morbid angel and things like that or slayer so i think yep. you know black metal maybe yeah you know, discovered it a bit later or you know started to get into it and then it you know it did grow on me more as i got older and um i guess 
you know, there's something a little bit, or well, I always found like a little bit um, mysterious about black metal, maybe because of the history yep. of, um, you know, the, the events in Norway, um, you know, around that black metal scene kind of gives it a yep. certain, you know, um, sense of like, yeah, mystery or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, mistake. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Beautiful darkness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the yeah. latest album, King, like, as I was saying before, it's an absolute beast of an album. Personally, for me, it's up there as one of my favourite albums for the year, metal albums for the year, and it's definitely up there as one of my favourite Australian metal albums for the year. Oh, awesome. Um, can I ask first how you approach the song composition and songwriting for this album? Um, uh, look, we're basically... It was a similar approach to Reclaim the Darkness. Um, let's kind of start writing songs and see where they go, very basically. But I, I guess from uh, for that album, my main thing I just wanted to kind of do different or add, add in, you know, was um, some faster stuff, basically. So I guess that was a, a new challenge to kind of, kind of my i really lo- was happy like 100 percent happy with reclaim the darkness but i wanted to keep that sound but have some more faster songs on there yep um so yeah i think i mean approaching the writing it was that that was that was the new challenge i guess to add in that that was a new element for king to have you know there's a few couple of songs on there that you know is maybe like 80 percent blasts but still keep it kind of black but with a bit of melody and still catchy um so yeah i mean we, i kind of started writing for that pretty soon after reclaim the darkness came out kind of august 2016 yeah um and i pretty much started writing for that within a couple of months of that so it did continue on and i was still kind of in the same mind frame as well so i mean you can hear obviously similarities between the two yeah um yeah, but then over the you know the year or so of writing, the other elements came in, I guess. Yeah, it's an awesome album. I, I must say, I've been personally hammering the hell out of it since it oh, cool. came out. <laughs> I really do enjoy it. It's up there with for me, as I was saying, one of my um, favorite albums of the year, along with Distant Tomb. Oh, that's cool. And in the Burial, Freedom of Fear. There's some amazing Australian metal bands that are out there in Australia, and then people don't realise them. I've it's probably same with yourselves. You're probably more recognised over in Europe. I know a lot more of my Europe fr- European friends are heard of you guys than here in Australia. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Yeah. Um, look, I'm not. I'm not. Too, I think we are because I mean our main record label is Indie Recordings, who are based in Norway, so they have you know great reach in Norway and through Europe. Like it did come out um, in Australia, both albums through an Australian label, EVP, which have got yeah, it out yeah. here too. But um, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot more, definitely a lot more market for it, for that kind of yep. music over there. I mean, you know, I'm sure you know, it's just absolutely huge metal in general over there. It's yeah. you know, enormous. And Australia, I guess you're a bit restricted with um, places to play. You know, there's, yep. there's a lot, but, you know, it's a big country. There's a lot of travel to do between kind of only a handful of big cities and you know a, f- a few regional ones that you can do as well. So I think, um, yeah, it's definitely it's probably more more um, popular in Europe. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. There's more media and more coverage and more oh, people yeah. getting into this sort of stuff. Whereas here, if you're not a cold chisel cover band or you're not, you know, yeah. a pop label, they, they, they tend to kind of take a steer clear from you. Whereas me, I, I love the underground scene and bands like yourselves and discovering and hearing what you guys and other bands are bringing out. For me, it's amazing what we have. The talent here in Australia and abroad is just unreal. It's hard to keep up with it all, actually. Oh, it is. Oh. Like, there's a, you know, I think there's still a very strong metal scene in Australia, and, like, especially over the oh, last amazing. few years, I feel like, you know, you know, there's the people are putting on a lot of, like, kind of mini festivals. There's heaps of bands doing stuff. Heaps of bands, like, putting out releases, you know, yep. all the time, which is which is great, but it's, just, you know, just not that, that kind of same level of, you know, thousands of people at, sh- at festivals and shows and all that type of thing it's just not that kind no. of in that in yeah. that main you know more mainstream acceptance i guess 
Exactly. And um, with the recording and production process, um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Where did you get it recorded and who produced it for you and all the rest of it? Yeah. Um, we did pretty much the same as Reclaim the Darkness. So Joe Haley, who's um, our drummer Dave's brother, who um, plays guitar in Psychroptic, yeah. He, yeah. he um, recorded with Coldest of Cold, he recorded the drums and then um, guitars as well. We flew down to Tassie, to, where he's based, to do that. Yeah. Uh, and he did the bass as well. And then and we recorded the vocals ourselves and sent them to him. So he did all the mixing and he, he mastered this one as well. Yeah, so cool. he basically did, did the whole thing. Like he's awesome to work with. Um, yep. Super nice guy, really easy to work with and like fast as well. So, you know, if you're, if you're on a roll and you're do, you know, doing lots of different takes or whatever, he's just super quick and really, you know, really honest as well. Like it's a really good working relationship just to, to, you know, talk stuff through, stuff that's sounding crap or, you know, you could do a better job, a better take. It's just really quick with no fuss, which just really helps with like the workflow and getting a lot done. So he's been awesome. So he basically did the whole thing and we recorded, you know, a couple of, uh, yeah, all the vocals and I think maybe a couple of extra little guitar bits ourselves and send them to him. But yeah, he, yeah, we we just leave it up to him with sound wise. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Super a great, yeah. a great band, so Before yeah. before I um before I go, Dave, I'll just um ask yeah. you if you could um pick one track off Coldest of Cold that you were most proud of. Which one would it be and why? Um. Hmm. Um, let me think. Uh, probably Mountains Call uh, for me. Uh, look, I have to, I really, uh, there's a few that are up there, but I think Mountains Call, um, I really like it. To, um, well, I think it's a pretty cool song. It's catchy. It's got some cool build-ups to it. A big chorus that kind of, um, you know, Tony came up with this, um, just the way he kind of fit it into the riffs. It sounds great. It's really catchy. It's like really one that the kind of crowd could kind of chant along to. It's got a cool guitar lick. Yep. Um, uh, it's not it's not too long. Yeah, I don't know. I really like it. The arrangement isn't, um, it's not like super simple like super standard like verse chorus verse chorus but it's it's got a it's not that arrangement but it's got a really nice balance to it but with a slightly you know unusual arrangement i guess in my head so you know i'm kind of proud of that the way it came together it's um it's cool I like, and that's one we've been chucking in the live set and it works great too it's a really cool clip as well as funny you said oh, that because that's yeah. the exact track I was playing before I um, rang you, Mountain School. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that clip I was cranking. Oh, cool. Yeah, the <laughs> clip turned cool. out cool too, yeah. Yeah, it turned out really cool. No worries. Uh, David Hill, thank you so much for making some time to have a chat with myself and Crank, mate. I really, really do appreciate your time. All the best for the rest of 2019 and keep cranking that metal loud and proud in 2020, mate. Awesome. Thanks, Jai. Uh, absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for, um, thanks for the interview. Great stuff. Uh, legend. Cheers, mate.